Welcome to the Web Wheel Products Caliper Installation Guide for NS225 Transit Air Disc Brake Calipers. This video will outline proper procedures for the removal and replacement of a web air disc brake caliper onto its carrier. First, the old caliper carrier assembly must be removed from the vehicle. Follow the vehicle service manual for proper removal guidelines, as well as all customary safety procedures. Install the old caliper carrier assembly into a sturdy vise or fixture to hold it securely. These components are heavy, so use caution while lifting. Grip the carrier beneath the machined face with the jaws of the vise. Gripping the carrier in other areas may cause the vise to lose grip or may bend the carrier when torquing the bolts. Next, the protective cap on the long guide pin must be removed. Use a hammer and screwdriver or pry bar to punch a hole in the center of the cap. Then pry the cap from its bore. Do not puncture the cap near the edge as this could damage the caliper or the guide pin located beneath the cap. Use a 14 mm hex socket and breaker bar to loosen the bolt inside the guide pin. Extra leverage may be required to break the bolt free. Only loosen the bolt nearest to the vise. Applying torque to the bolt opposite the vise could bend the carrier. To prevent component damage, do not use power tools during the caliper removal and replacement process. Now remove the caliper carrier assembly from the vise and rotate the assembly so the opposite guide pin is near the vise jaws and secure the assembly in the vise. Use a 14 mm hex socket and breaker bar to loosen the bolt inside the short guide pin. The two bolts holding the caliper to the carrier can now be removed using the 14 mm hex socket. Support the caliper while removing the bolts. Then remove the caliper from the carrier. Use caution while lifting as the caliper is heavy. Now that the caliper is removed from the carrier, inspect the carrier for damage and or wear. Clean rust and debris from the mounting surfaces, including the counter bores and brake pad abutment surfaces, using a wire brush or other suitable tool. Remove the printed instructions and the installation kit from the box. Note the new web aftermarket caliper's model number, serial number, and installation date. Then go to webadb.com backslash register to register the caliper warranty. Locate the new guide pins in the installation kit with the caliper. The long bolt with pre-applied thread locking agent is used for the long guide pin. The short bolt is used for the short guide pin. Position the new web caliper onto its back so that the new guide pins can be installed. To avoid contamination within the guide pin bushings, use new gloves or clean hands to apply grease to the bushings. Use one pack of grease per bushing. Ensure that an even coating of grease is applied to the bushings and guide pins. Use only the grease provided in the kit, as some types of grease can cause degradation of rubber components. Slide the new short guide pin bolt into the short guide pin. Install the assembly into the short bushing from the interior of the caliper. Use clean, dry hands to pinch the rubber boot and roll it over its retaining lip. Slowly turn the short guide pin to ensure the boot is fully engaged into the groove. Do not use sharp tools which could puncture the rubber boot. Push the bolt head partially through the rubber boot to hold the bolt out of the way during caliper installation. Repeat the greasing procedure for the long guide pin. Install the new long guide pin from the outside of the caliper. Once the long guide pin is installed into the long bushing, snap the rubber boot into the groove located on the end of the long guide pin. The boot retaining washer has a flat side and a recessed side. Install the washer with the recessed side facing the boot. The recessed washer fits inside the bottom lip of the boot. If the washer easily falls off the boot, check the boot to ensure it is fully seated in the groove. Lift the used carrier into place and onto the new caliper. Align the guide pins so that they pilot into the respective counter bores on the carrier. Make sure that the plastic boot retaining washer doesn't slide out of place. Install the caliper with the rubber boot in a compressed state to prevent air entrapment within the boot. Install the new long guide pin bolt into the long guide pin. Use a 14 mm hex socket to thread both guide pin bolts into the carrier by hand. Make sure that the head of the short guide pin bolt pulls completely through the extended rubber boot. 
Install the caliper carrier assembly into a sturdy vise and use a calibrated torque wrench to tighten the bolt closest to the vise jaws to 133 foot-pounds or 180 newton meters as shown in the instruction diagram. Finalize the bolt tension by tightening this bolt to an additional 90 degrees using a breaker bar. Now, install the plastic sealing cap onto the end of the short guide sleeve boot. Start by stretching the end of the boot over the guide pin. While the boot is held in place, position the sealing cap using light pressure, but do not snap it into the guide pin yet. Allow the boot to slide off the end of the guide pin and onto the groove in the plastic cap. Now, snap the plastic cap down into the short guide pin to seal the boot to the pin. Rotate the caliper carrier assembly in the vise so that the opposite guide pin is near the vise jaws. Torque the second guide pin bolt to 133 foot-pounds plus an additional 90 degrees rotation. Cap installation tools are included in the Web Caliper Service Toolkit, part number KS0010. While the long guide sleeve is in the vise, press fit the new cover into the long guide sleeve bore using a hammer. The cover cap should be within 1 16th of an inch of flush to the end of the caliper. Remove the caliper carrier assembly from the vise. Congratulations! The assembly is now ready to be reinstalled onto the vehicle following the instructions in the vehicle service manual.